Bravos. So here we are, we are in uh, Plaza Constitucion. This is like one of the central train stations. I'll show it to you, hold on. There it is, right over there. That's where the, all the trains come in from out to the, uh, to, like, to the east on the Roca line. And then there's also a subte station right here. So you can hop on the subway, and that's what we're gonna do today. I got a, a subway card yesterday at the airport, and uh, we're gonna hop on this and try and go to the Casa Rosada. Casa Rosada is like the president's office, and uh, it's important because it's important because there is a big election about to happen here, presidential election, in just a few days. Kind of a crazy crazy election situation but once we get to the Casa Rosada I'll talk more about it but uh, everywhere you go there's signs for the different candidates uh, I just got this thing handed to me that's one of the candidates Sergio Massa yeah everywhere you go everybody is like election crazy everything is all about the election but today we're gonna see where the president works uh, we're also going to try and buy another uh, Subway card because what I found out is that uh, there are sometimes Subway card shortages and sometimes it's hard to get a Subway card. So if your Subway card stops working or you lose it or somebody takes it or something like that, then it may actually be hard to get one. I've heard uh, like all kinds of stories about people when there are shortages of these cars, trying to go to like 10, 15 different places to buy them and nobody has them. So if we wanna uh, be able to ride the subte and uh, the colectivos, the buses around here and the trains, uh, we're gonna need a Subway card and we might need an extra Subway card just in case. It's a nice day today, really beautiful, uh, sunny. I'm standing in the shade here, uh, but it, it, it's really nice, really nice. So let's go ahead and get on, this, uh, on the subte right now. The Subte here is really, uh, really affordable. It's like uh, 80 
pesos, I think, for a ride, which is about 10 cents. Uh, you can transfer unlimited times, so it's a really great way to get around the city if you just want to uh, just want to uh, get from one place to another place really quick. You just hop on the soup pay. Uh, it goes to a lot of places. The lines are a little weird. Sometimes there's uh, connecting lines that you have to like go far out to the city and then come back in to get to a certain place. But most places you can get to pretty easily. So the reason that the soup day is so cheap is because it's subsidized by the government. Uh, there are actually a lot of things here in Argentina that are subsidized by the government. That's one of the big uh, campaign pledges for Sergio Massa, one of the candidates, is that he is pledging that he will not uh, cut any of the social safety nets or any of the government subsidized things. We're talking government health care, public transportation, uh, education, uh, all kinds of things like that. Uh, on the other side, <laughs> there's Javier Mille, who is like a right-wing libertarian. He wants to cut all social services. He wants to abolish the central bank. He wants to dollarize the economy. He wants to privatize everything. So you can see the difference between the two candidates very, very clearly. It's um, there's, there's really no gray area between the two of them. The one thing that I think they both sort of agree on is they have a kind of a tough on crime stance. But, you know, in most elections, in most places, that's, that's the case. You can't really get elected uh, really anywhere if you're not you know, tough on crime. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting election. We'll talk more about it once we get to the Casa Rosada. Uh, the train's here. i got to go. So this is a map of the whole subway system, the Subte. And uh, let's see. We are uh, right there, Avenida de Mayo. de Mayo Casa Rosada. And uh, we're down here. Constitución. Free transfers. Can't be beat. I, I, I don't know of any, any subway system in, in any city in the whole world that you're going to get for like you know, 10 cents to be able to ride anywhere you want to go. So it's a good deal. It's a good deal. Let's go. We head up here. Ninia A. Casa Rosada, and I'm going to continue talking here just because I think this dude playing the music in the background, I'm pretty sure all that's going to be copyrighted, so we got to keep talking no matter what. That's Casa Rosada. That's where the president works. Uh, it's not like the White House president doesn't live uh, there like he does in the United States, but he does work there. Uh, but you know what? I got to get away from this music, so we're going to keep talking while we walk. So basically, uh, this is uh, this is it. This is like the center of uh, center of government. The center of government, basically, for the whole uh, the whole of uh, Argentina, because Buenos Aires is a um, is an autonomous federal zone. It's like Washington D.C. Uh, there is a Buenos Aires ciudad city. There's also Buenos Aires province, like the state of Buenos Aires, where the city is uh, exists. But the city itself is an autonomous federal zone. So the capital of Argentina is Buenos Aires, but the capital of Buenos Aires is actually La Plata, which is a totally different city. Uh, we'll probably actually go and see that too. Let me flip it over and you can see my face. And here we are in La Plaza de Mayo. Behind me, you can see it, there is uh, see it there's this beautiful uh, obelisk here flip around and see it it's really nice and this whole area is uh, is all government buildings right like so 
there's Casa Rosada, but then also right over there, next to Casa Rosada with the big banner on the front. If I can zoom in and check it out. That's the, uh, minister, the Ministry of the Economy, right? And interestingly enough, uh, that's, uh, that's Sergio Massa's place because uh, he is the Minister of the Economy of the current government. And so he's basically like the incumbent. There's no actual incumbent president in this election um, because the, in, the, the incumbent actually decided not to, uh, not to run again so um, so it's it's uh, essentially new two new candidates but if there is someone who is the incumbent it's Massa and it's really interesting because you see in like um, a lot of Western news sources uh, European news sources uh, American Canadian they're all talking about Millier right because Millier is like the firebrand right wing they call him the Donald Trump of, uh, of uh, Argentina and he wants to you know come in and 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 tear the whole thing down um, it, he actually in his campaign events would like bring a chainsaw with him to the campaign events symbolically because he wants to like cut everything down um, but the the crazy thing is you, you look around here and um, in the days like right now right before the election I don't see a lot of Millier um, posters ads things like that the the entire city as far as i can tell is just blanketed with masa masa stuff masa posters masa flyers people handing out masa flyers i haven't seen a lot of uh, a lot of melee stuff which makes sense because um you know the <laughs> masa has the whole weight of the government behind it because he's uh you know he's uh, basically the he's the minister of economy he's basically like the secretary of the treasury in the united states and uh, it's interesting between the two candidates, like I was saying before, one of them's a far right, you know, um, wants to privatize everything. That's Millier, and um, it, you know, it, there there are a lot of um, uh, people who, uh, who are, are pretty pretty fed up with the situation in Argentina. I mean, right now, the economy is not doing great. There is about a hundred, you know, over one hundred and thirty percent year on year inflation in Argentina. And uh, a lot of that happened under uh, under the watch of um, of uh, Massa's, Massa's party, right? And his party was in charge, and he was basically in charge of the economy when the inflation skyrocketed and went out of control. So, uh, so a lot of people think that Massa has something to answer for. They blame uh, a lot of the problems in the economy on uh, corruption and on the central bank. Just just printing money um, in order to to maintain uh, like social programs uh, like free education and free health care and and things like that so and to a certain extent that's true um, if you were to ask a Masa supporter they would probably tell you that uh, the reason that it's all happening is because it's all just outside things that were out of you know their control right there was a big drought and the soybean harvest, which is one of the major export crops of Argentina, was not good. Uh, there was coronavirus, which we all know uh, made a major hit to the economy. You're seeing inflation in countries all around because of coronavirus. Um, but, but you know, nothing like you're seeing here. I mean, people in the United States were going crazy when inflation hit 8%. I mean, it's 130% year on year here. And... Uh, a lot of economists are predicting that a year from now it's going to be 200 percent so uh, those numbers are, are pretty unfathomable to anybody who I think lives in the United States or Canada or you know uh, Europe the, the inflation is is certainly a problem in all of those places but it's nothing like it is here and interestingly um, Massa has been kind of like in all the debates and his public appearances he's been kind of quiet on what his plan is going to be to fix inflation. Now, Millet, he's got a plan to fix inflation. His plan is very radical. His plan is to abolish the central bank so that they basically can't print money and dollarize the economy so that they would use uh, US dollars as the currency of exchange here instead of pesos. Uh, they, Massa and his supporters feel like that's a more stable currency and that they, they 
won't be there won't be as much inflation because the central bank just won't be able to print money anymore. Uh, it'll be um, it, they'll just be using dollars. Um, that that comes with its own set of problems. Uh, the the thing the thing about um, about the other side about Massa is basically his campaign, as far as I can tell, is just like hey. Uh, you know, uh, vote for me, stay the course. All these outside factors are what created all the economic problems and the inflation. And if you just vote for me, I will, you know, like everything will just sort of fix itself. All the problems will just sort of solve themselves. Um, so it's an interesting dynamic between the two of them. There was just a debate recently where um, it had a slightly different debate format than normal. The, the um, candidates were able to directly question each other and um, Massa has a lot more political experience than Millier and so he went on the offensive in that debate and he was questioning Millier and in, in doing all of that uh, you know interestingly Millier was sort of like on his back foot he's usually a very aggressive campaigner so so in that debate, you know, Massa was really on the offensive, and I think the general uh, consensus is that he won that debate. And since it's so close to the final election, uh, that's that's kind of a big deal. That's a real big deal. And the the thing about Millier is he was an outsider, and he wasn't really expected to uh, to be as competitive in the election as he was. But there was a poll about a month and a half, well, more like three months ago, I would say where he came out as the leading candidate and that was a big surprise and it gave a big boost to his campaign and in the previous round of election uh, where there were multiple candidates from different parties um, Millier was uh, was predicted to actually win and um, and come out in first place now he wasn't going to have enough votes to um, to be able to like win the election outright but they um, the prediction was that he was going to have uh, the plurality of the votes, and uh, it actually didn't turn out that way. What happened was Massa won, I think, 36% of the vote, and Millier only won 30, uh, which was really surprising. And uh, because of this sort of an upset victory for Massa, uh, immediately Millier and his supporters started claiming that there was uh, election fraud. Um, ballot stuffing and things like that. Now, uh, there, there's not, uh, like, Millier hasn't provided evidence for those claims, but at the same time, like, there is a lot of political corruption in Argentina, and they have a history of political corruption, so it, it's not out of the realm of possibilities that there could have been, um, uh, there could have been some sort of election fraud. I don't know, I, I don't know the situation well enough, and I'm not really in a position to comment on any of that, but, um, the, the, the interesting thing about about walking around in these in these last few days is Massa is plastered everywhere. Everywhere I go, I see Massa's face on posters, on television ads, um, flyers like I, like that one that I just got handed. I mean, I got that's just one of the ones that I got handed literally just in the last half an hour getting from Plaza Constitución to here. I mean, uh, people are handing those things to me all over the streets. When I walked by the uh, Ministry of the Economy, uh, there was a big Massa poster, like, right inside. So, in the United States, um, it's, it's illegal for, for any campaigning like that, uh, or electioneering, to happen either at voting places or in government offices or anything like that. Apparently, it's not illegal to do that here, because... Like uh, you go to government offices and there are there are posters of Massa all over the place, election posters of Massa, which is really interesting to me. So uh, let's take a lot, one last look at the Casa Rosada. Oh, get, get away from this! There's like this uh, big pile of junk over here. But take a look at the Casa Rosada, beautiful, beautiful building. And uh, out in front, of course. The massive, massive flag of Argentina. Casa de Mayo. Lots of people enjoying 
bright sunny day taking pictures. See right over there, that's the, the uh, obelisk that I was standing in front of before. It's a little, uh, a little farther away now. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with this election. All I know is that uh, it's a it's an extremely important election for Argentina. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I, I'm conflicted about about the uh, the election because it's like I don't I don't have a I don't have a horse in this race, you know. But at the same time, there are a lot of similarities, uh, you know, between this election and between what's going on in the United States. You know, you have a, a an establishment, uh, kind of a crony capitalist. Um, uh, you know, part, uh, party member who is more or less an incumbent, and then you have the outsider who is claiming election fraud and wants to tear everything down, and, and, um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's impossible to not see the similarities, uh, for sure. But, uh, let's, let's keep going. We, we came, we came and we saw the Casa Rosada, and that was one of our things to do today. Uh, one of the other things was we were going to go and try and find another Sube card. So let's go try and find our second Sube card, um, and we'll check back in once, once, uh, once we find a place where we can do that. There's got to be like a kiosk or something around here where I can buy a Sube card. So I'm just going to take a poke around the neighborhood, and we'll see what we can find. So, uh, maybe there is not a Sube card shortage, but you know, you never know. You gotta be prepared. Be prepared for the future, right? Because like, if there is a Sube card shortage in the future, and for some reason we lose a Sube card, now we're gonna have an extra one. So it's a good deal. So if you think you can get away from Starbucks, uh, you can't. came halfway around the world to another continent and well there it is Starbucks yeah they're uh, they're everywhere they're everywhere you can't get away from Starbucks Starbucks is everywhere Starbucks is everywhere I keep seeing these signs everywhere and I don't quite understand them I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look at this and try and figure out exactly what this is, but uh, it seems a little strange because Dia del Niño means like uh, day of the child. Okay, so when I look at this close, more closely, I think it's actually an anti-millier political ad. Um, at the top where it says Mercado Liberado, that means freed market, and he is the libertarian free market candidate. 
the uh, picture next to it is actually like an outline of his wild hair. I can tell by looking at it, uh, which he's well known for. And the Mercado Liberado font is very similar to Mercado Libre font, which is like a uh, online um, e-commerce website, kind of like the Amazon of South America. So it's made to look like it's an ad for uh, a, a gun, like, hey, let's we're going to sell guns to kids. Um, underneath the anti-bullying thing, where it says, no le enseñes a defenderse, enseñale a que le tengan miedo. It means basically like, don't teach them to defend themselves, teach them to fear him referring to, I would imagine, Millier. And then underneath, uh, promoción valida desde en 10 de diciembre para toda la Argentina depende de vos. Uh, 10th of December, that's the inauguration day for the president. So it's saying promotion is valid from the inauguration day of the president for all of Argentina, and it depends on you. So I think this is an anti-Millier uh, political ad that is um, criticizing his, um, his policy that he wants to, uh, you know, loosen gun control restrictions. They're saying basically like, if you elect Millier, you're going to see ads in Mercado Libre selling guns to kids that they can use to defend themselves against bullying. So I hopped back down to the slip day. Uh, there was nothing in the area around there that I wanted to eat, but I'm going to get back on uh, the sea line and head south to uh, a neighborhood called San Telmo. Very, very loud in here. We're gonna go to San Telmo uh, and try and get something to eat there. I hear it's a real nice neighborhood. Uh, but I also wanted to show you this cool old subway station. Check it out. Okay, so we're off. We're off the Subte, we're on our way to San Telmo. A nice lady back there told me it's this way, about six blocks. And, uh, oh, here he is. Here's the guy right here. Hold on a second. See, when I told you that uh, masa posters and everything were everywhere, here he is. There's one right there. This is probably an older one, actually. But, uh, Union por la Patria. And, you know, like I said, I've seen a lot of masa posters around and a lot of people handing out masa flyers, but I haven't really seen any Millier. Uh, I feel like his uh, support is more like grassroots, sort of a groundswell situation. Um, and, you know, like I said, he doesn't really have the, the backing of the government behind him. So, uh, so maybe that's why we're seeing a lot of the, a lot of the masa stuff everywhere. But uh, we'll keep on walking down here when we get to San Telmo. We're going to find a nice place to have something to eat. Uh, and then uh, my battery is running like pretty low on the camera, so we may have to call it at that point. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how much battery we have left when we get there. Random Michael Jordan jersey on the street. Let's go. So I think uh, we're getting close to San Telmo here. The, the buildings look very old and very cool. I'll flip it around, you can see. Yeah. Check this out. <laughs> Try not to get run over in the street here. Cool old architecture. San Telmo here. It's a nice little square. A little market going on. People selling stuff. Looks really beautiful. A lot of people are here shopping. Looks like there's probably a lot of tourists in this area, but man, it's cool. It's a cool area. Oh, and of course, you can never get away. 
can never get away from Starbucks. Starbucks will follow you everywhere. You can go to another continent, but Starbucks will be there. Anyway, yeah. Uh, let's take a little walk through here. With with the remaining battery that we have left on the plane. Photographs. So the jewelry here. Earrings with famous people, including Che Guevara and Bart Simpson. Nice little area where you can hang out, have a drink. I think some people are playing music here. There's probably taiko dancers. It smells like Otto's jacket around here, so that's good. Man, maybe we should go in there. I think we're gonna go. I think we're gonna go in this place and see if we can get some uh, some meat. Parrilla del Recon de Rodrigo. Okay, so we did it. Mission accomplished. We got lunch. Uh, they were blasting uh, copyrighted music in there, so I couldn't film anything. But it was delicious. I had a shorty pond, some french fries, had a nice beer. Uh, I got to hang out in that building, which was a cool, like, old building where they were uh, blasting copyrighted music, including, uh, like, weirdly apple bottom jeans, which was interesting. Uh, also, a bird flew in there and just hung out like he works there, and nobody seemed to have a problem with it, so that was cool. Um, my camera actually really is about to die. I have like 5% battery left, so that's going to be at the end of the video. Um, mission accomplished. We got another Subway card. Uh, we went and saw La Casa Rosada, where the president works. Uh, and we saw the neighborhood of San Telmo. Uh, with a beautiful little square, we got something to eat, and uh, that's it. That's a good, that's a good day out, I think. All right, so uh, that'll be it. And uh, next time, I don't know exactly what we're gonna do, but uh, it'll be something good. I swear.